Oh, folks. Um, okay, so I have got some awesome new information. Uh, some tipsters uh, gave me some tips this morning. This is why I'm recording my first video for the day so late. Um, this is big. This is really, really big. Pardon the redness across my face. My curtains in my dining room are blood red, so. <laughs> but I don't feel like going in my office. It's too cold. Um, at least it is for now. <laughs> but I have some interesting information. And again, I'll be including the links to these videos in the description. But in the November 6th interview with Stephen Avery, um, if you pay attention to the call, at one point the officer asks him, what happened Wednesday night? Wednesday night was the 2nd of November, folks. This is one day before Teresa Halbach is officially reported missing by her mother. Why would the cop be asking that? But it's Stephen's answer that gets me. He says, a cop came out to speak with me, but I can't recall if it was Wednesday or Thursday night. What he does remember was that it was at his mother's house that the police officer made contact with him. And it was around supper time, which, you know, he goes to his mom's house for dinner. Who wouldn't, given the option? <laughs> My mom still cooks better than me. Um, and... He said that a cop came out on Wednesday night. Mind you, this again, this is November 2nd. This is before Teresa Halbach is officially reported missing. A police officer comes out to speak with him. He's able to say that it is a Manitowoc County Sheriff, but he doesn't remember which one. And the police officer was asking if, and I quote Stephen on this. He said, if Teresa somebody was out taking some pictures. Wait, I thought Ken Kratt said that Teresa Halbach had been targeted by Stephen Avery. If she was targeted, that means he was obsessed with her. If he was obsessed with her, he would have remembered her name! Um, but this is why I don't believe that it was Thursday that this happened. It was Wednesday instead. Because the officer did not ask if he could take a look around. And the official record is that the first interview with Stephen Avery on November 3rd took place at Stephen Avery's trailer. And the police officer, Colburn, did ask if he could take a look around. And Stephen allowed him to. So that's why I think it, that, that it was Wednesday night as opposed to Thursday night. Because Thursday night... He was at his trailer, Colburn showed up, asked him about Teresa, and then asked if he could look around. So it was Wednesday night that a police officer from the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department showed up at his mother's house asking about Teresa Halbach one day before she is officially listed as missing and reported by her mother. Yeah, listen to the November 6th uh, uh audio and you will hear it. I I believe it's at about the 10 minute mark. Then this is some bombshell shit, folks. Okay, I know all of you have seen that video on YouTube, uh, the Manitowoc County dispatch calls regarding Teresa Halbach. The, the, the sound bite at the 540 mark is very interesting. Okay, so if you listen to it, one female's voice comes on, is talking with the dispatcher, asks about 323 and where he's going to. Now, 323 is Colburn's call sign. You all just learned something. Hey, there you go. You learn something new every day. And you just fulfilled your quota. <laughs> but then there's a pause and a new female's voice comes on, and we recognize this female's voice, folks. It's P.I. Pam! Pamela Sturm! Pamela Sturm is calling on November 5th, the day they find the car, to Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department. Let that sink in for a second. 
Didn't she say that she had a direct line to Sheriff Poggle at Calumet? Why the fuck is she calling Manitowoc? But it's what happens next that's interesting. Clearly, by the content of the call, police officers are already on the grounds at Avery Salvage Yard. But she tells the dispatcher at Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department, were you given that info from Calumet prior to this on, um, on that missing female? That's a strange question, Pam. Then she tells the dispatcher, we have located the vehicle at Avery's salvage yard and we need help. Why? Isn't Calumet already there? I thought Manitowoc was already there in the form of Officer Remaker. So what, what up with that, Pam? You slimy shit. The dispatcher asks her, what do you need help with, looking or what? And Pam says, I believe so. Why the hell would Pamela Sturm be calling Manitowoc? Couldn't Calumet County officers just get them on the horn themselves? Why is she acting as go-between? Anybody? Anybody? Pam? Remaker? Anyone? No? Didn't think so. Folks, this is suspicious as shit. And it needs to be looked into. Now, I am going to, I have a couple of other pieces of information that I need to look into today. You guys are going to be so excited. I have two pieces of information that I'll be uh, detailing out in subsequent videos today. And don't forget, today is my live Q&A. Starts at, I believe, 1 o'clock. You'll find it in my events. Um, but I'm going to be uh, looking through this. This is Joel and Zipper's statement to police and this lovely little piece which is Mr. Kratz email to Ms. Kulhane. Aren't you excited? All right folks, you all know what you need to do. Take a look around, see what, what, what documentation we can find with regards to this phone call to Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department. I will leave the links in the description of this video below. Thank you all very much for watching and we'll see you soon.